Hi everybody, TJ Mack of Vintage Cards and Nostalgia here. And a couple weeks ago, my 11-year-old son Joe and I went to Home Depot to pick up a bush and a couple of plants for the yard to replace some we lost over the winter. I took him to the section where the part shade plants were and told him he could pick out a couple so we can plant them in the yard. Now Home Depot was only a few blocks from the 7-Eleven I used to go to when I was a kid. So I decided to treat him to a Slurpee, and of course I was going to have one myself. So on the way, we drove down Buffalo Avenue by 58th Street, which is where my grandparents used to live. And there it was, the old brown stucco house. The yard was in pretty rough shape, the shrubs were overgrown, and the wood trim was faded red and cracked from years of neglect. And my grandparents had passed away, and they hadn't lived in that house for 40 years. When I was a kid in the late 70s and early 80s, my mom worked part-time, and she would drop me off at my grandparents for the day. I remember spending many sunny spring Saturdays playing in the yard while my grandfather puttered around with his wheelbarrow and tended to the plants. He was particularly fond of ferns, which are green, leafy, flowerless plants. He also loved peonies, which bloom into beautiful pink and purple flowers. Now my mom was just grossed out by them because they would attract these small black ants that loved to feast on the nectar covering the bulbs. On these days, my grandfather would always have the radio playing. It never failed. And if he wasn't listening to the Blue Jays or the Yankees, he would have music on. And I remember the station and the slogan. You're listening to AM 1230, the WEC, playing the music of your life. And I looked it up and the music of your life was a radio format that was created in 1978 that played adult standards, not rock and roll. It was marketed to those at the time that would have been in their mid-30s to their 60s. And you would hear artists like Frank Sinatra and Percy Faith Les Baxter, and Perry Como. With few exceptions like Sinatra, the music from this era, which was once a piece of American culture, is now fading away, as many who listen to it have passed on. Now the term music of your life got me thinking about collecting. For many of us collectors, the cards are an integral part of the story of our lives. I don't necessarily mean the cards themselves, but what they represent. Now, if you watch my channel, you know this by now, that, that my primary focus is connecting with that sense of history. I feel when I assemble cards in my collection that I'm becoming closer to cherished bygone days and people from the past. And one of the things that I enjoy most about being on YouTube is when viewers of my channel who don't make videos take the time to tell me why they collect and they even email me pictures of their card rooms or their latest acquisitions. I have received emails and comments from collectors who share their collecting journeys and how certain items they own provide emotional comfort and mark their lives in personally meaningful ways. It brings me joy to hear when collectors connect with an item in a way that transcends value, rarity, and condition. The things that we just so often hear about that really just don't mean that much to me, to be honest. It, it means a lot that viewers of my videos think enough of me to share their stories and their cards. Now today, I want to highlight some individuals who do not make videos but take the time to share their collecting journeys with me. The first is someone who's been there for much of my YouTube journey, and that is Gannon, who goes by the YouTube name JGA59. I don't know exactly how long Gannon has been watching my videos and commenting, but it's been a while. And he's just a, a very thoughtful commenter and one of the most astute minds in this community, whether you make videos or not. He is so knowledgeable about baseball history, and the best of all, he can articulate his views 
in a very thought-provoking way. There are many times I have looked things up after his comments and we just go back and forth because I really need to gain a deeper understanding of some of the topics at times that I'm talking about. And Gannon, he, he holds me straight very often. And I'll sometimes ask Gannon what he's been acquiring lately and I'll get a response containing an interesting group of cards that I know have some emotional, nostalgic, or historical meaning behind them. Now to honor Gannon, I'm showing off some cards from the 1968 Topps baseball set. I know he's fond of this set and he likes the cards with the yellow circle on them, like the Cardinals. And here you have Roger Maris and Lou Brock, both cards that have been with me for probably almost 20 years, along with this brand new edition I just got in this past week, Orlando Cepeda. And I just love the look of this card and then having a group together with the Maris and the Brock. Now the next collector is Gary, who goes by the YouTube name Golden Slumber 474. Now while Gary and I both have a passion for vintage baseball cards, we especially bond over our love of football and hockey cards. In a community where football and hockey trail far behind baseball and hobby interest, I know I can count on my buddy Gary to be someone I can comment with back and forth about those sports. I'm also grateful that Gary takes the time to share with me pictures of some of the cards he has acquired for his collection. Recently, I saw some beautiful early 50s Parker's cards and a couple 70s Opeachy goalies that he acquired. He just has a fantastic collection. And I recently received as a gift from him this 1964 Philadelphia Earl Morrill as a special present. And I have this card here displayed with the 1968 Topps Johnny Unitas and the 1972 Topps Bob Greasy for good reason. Morrill played quarterback in the NFL for 21 seasons for six different teams. He was primarily a backup, playing in 255 games, but starting only 102 of them. What I find most interesting about him is that the Colts acquired him in 1968 when he was 34 years old to back up Johnny Unitas. Now, moral up to that point, you know, he started here and there, but his career didn't really stand out. But in that season, Johnny Unitas suffered a seasoning ending injury in the preseason. Morrill started over, started as a quarterback for the entire season and became an unlikely star as he led the Colts to a 15-1 record, winning the league MVP. In the playoffs, the Colts won their first two games, including a 34-0 beatdown of the Browns in the NFL championship. But then the magical season ended in the Super Bowl as Morrill threw three interceptions and got pulled for Johnny Unitas as Joe Namath and the Jets scored the biggest upset in NFL history up to that time. But in 1972, Earl Morrill was thrust back into the spotlight again for the Dolphins, as coach Don Shula, who was his coach with the Colts in 1968, called him back into service to back up Bob Greasy. Now Greasy broke his ankle in the fifth game of that season against the Chargers, and then Morrill proceeded to lead the Dolphins to 11 straight wins, including two in the playoffs. And then Greasy ended up coming back for the Super Bowl as the Dolphins defeated the Redskins to go undefeated. So in that historic Dolphins season, Earl Morrill won more games than the starter Bob Greasy did. In 1968 and 1972, Morrill's combined record was 26-2 as a starting quarterback including the playoffs. This is the very first card I've added of his to my collection, and I just want to thank you, Gary, for the special gift. Next person I want to recognize is a gentleman by the name of Noel. I've never interacted with him prior to him emailing me and sharing how much he enjoys my channel. Well, Noel, it's either Noel or Noel. He's a collector of graded football Hall of Fame rookie cards and Miami Dolphins. Now, he sent me pictures of his card room, and I got to say, it's just beautiful. It's very tastefully decorated and features several cases on the walls filled with a who's who of football players. 
And I want to thank Noel for sharing his collection with me. It was really an honor that you thought of me to send those pictures to. And I'm showing uh, three Hall of Fame cards with two being Hall of Famers with the Dolphins because that's your favorite team. And the first here is this 1984 Topps rookie card of center Dwight Stevenson. And the next to him is the 1987 Topps Dan Marino. And then at the end, I included the 1965 Philadelphia rookie of defensive back Mel Renfro from my favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys. Final person I want to recognize is Dan, who goes by YazFan on YouTube. Now, Dan and I exchange emails quite a bit about cards, our faith, and life. Like the others, I appreciate that he puts his heart into his collecting. I've watched his focus change some as he's pared down his collection to acquire cards of players that he more often connects with. He recently started collecting cards from the 1970 Topps football set, and he hasn't collected football in many years but 1970 were the first football cards he collected as a kid. So in his honor, I have here this 1963 Topps second year card of the late Roman Gabriel, who was Dan's favorite player growing up. I also included my favorite Yaz card, his 1967 Topps, which happens to be from his Triple Crown season in the year they went to the World Series. Now in the center is a beautifully autographed card of Vita Blue, that Dan sent me after watching my video on him. The back talks about his iconic 1971 season, which will go perfectly with my 1971 Topps blue card. Now I'm grateful for this gift, Dan, and it's going to be displayed in my case in my card room that documents my collecting journey. Now I want to express my gratitude for all the support all of you have given me and many others in this community it means a lot and may everyone have an enjoyable Memorial Day weekend. May we take a moment to recognize those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, not only in the United States military, but also those who have fought side by side with the U.S. God bless them all. Have a great weekend.